Hello. We are into preparation of modules and contextualized materials. Designing activities in the contextualized learning modules align with the most essential learning competencies. Your preparation was entirely different with what is happening now in the new normal. You are no longer to face your students until the government says so. Therefore, we adopt the modular instruction until now. And when you will be immersed outside, you are going to make use of this preparation. That is why we would like to let you know how to make these materials. Now let us talk first about the local heritage matrix and the contextualized curriculum matrix. In the contextualization, you have to look back into cultural mapping. Mapping who and what you are, be it a tribe, organization, community, group, school, association, business, or individual to find your unique assets or strengths. It is a systematic process. You need to have your purpose, your plan, and your criteria. The criteria must be district owned and it will be later forwarded division wide until the information will be forwarded even up to the region. And it is anchored on the regions, divisions, districts, and consider the unique culture of your own locality. In the preparation of this contextualized material, you must bring about a positive behavior. It should reflect the principle of inclusivism and avoid exclusivism. It must be authentic and connected to the child's real life. The material or the thing that you're going to write about may be written in the local language. Meaning, when we make the module in the contextualized materials, whichever language you are comfortable, you can make use of it. Our very aim is for our students to learn. We have to observe intellectual property rights. And we have to adhere to the LRMDS standards. We will first try to help the local heritage themes. These local heritage themes, I am going to provide you with samples. And from the samples that I give you, you can still add, depending upon the locality or the town where you are living. You have here annual rites, festivals, rituals, historical events, local heroes, intuitive values, beliefs, indigenous peoples, indigenous materials that reflect local traditions, family awardees, role models for achievement, musical pieces, instruments, songs, activities, literary anthologies, written and local language, folk tales, local games, food and local products, local groups and talents, topography, flora and fauna industry. In the later part, before we introduce to you uh, the 
themes, I have given you samples. And what you need to do first is to have this template. You have to choose the local heritage theme, and you have to think of what the learner should know about that local heritage theme. Then, what should the learner think and feel about that local heritage theme? And what the learner should be able to do in order to transfer learning? There are several examples in the following slides. So, the picture was taken. The name. So this sample is the Casa Rodriguez of Palestina Pili Camarina Sur. The other name is Aguila of Palestina. What the learner should know about. The castle-like structure was built on October 3, 1928 by Don Susana Rodriguez and was completed in 1951. This three-story house is fully concrete and is about 30 meters from the podlocked gate by the side of the National Road in Palestina, Pili, Camarina Sur. It has noticeably windows with iron grills for security. This structure stands out because of its art, deco design featuring concrete statue of an eagle. Its wings spread, settled on top of what appears to be a watch tower. Now, in what the learner should think and feel about, you are going to provide what is it that you want the child to think and feel about Casa Rodriguez and what the learner should be able to do to transfer learning. What should be the things that the child should do so that learning will be transferred. My dear students or friends, Casa Rodriguez, what the learner should know about, you need to make a survey. And you need to know the fact that you are going to place. This one was made by the group from Pili. It is important that the group from Pili will also talk about these local heritage themes because they are the ones who know better about Casa Rodriguez. During World War II, this structure was used as garrison by the Japanese Imperial Army. No other structure looks like this in the entire region. The Casa Rodriguez stands today as a fine example of Pili's build, built heritage. Its original state is being preserved and protected by some caretakers. The castle-like structure is fully concrete and is about 30 meters from a padlock gate by the side of the National Road in Palestina Pili Camarina Sur. Look at the fact that the child or the learners should learn about Casa Rodriguez. So you cannot just make use of her hearsays. You need really to make a research. Look, during World War II, this structure was used as garrison by the Japanese army. And you have there, no other structure looks like this in the entire Bicol region. And Casa Rodriguez stands today as a fine example of Pili's built heritage. Why do we have to emphasize this? It is because this structure is unique. This structure has been built 
in their place long time ago and there must be an interest and the child should have to think and feel about its importance now what will the learner do in order to transfer learning learning about this casa rodriguez which can only be found at pili camarines sur now you have there preservation of historical houses appreciation of artistry art deco design and recognition of the different plain figures found in the building now what will the learners do in order to transfer learning they have to conduct survey in their community of houses with unique artistry meaning the children or your students are going also to take a look in their locality about houses which are uniquely designed and had been preserved until now. Then you have their draw one's dream house using art decor design and make a diorama of a small shanty using plain figures out of wood scrap. This one is a watchtower of the Spanish era, Le Prosarium in Palestina. The name, historical name, is Hospital Diocesana de Lazarinos de Palestina. Or other name is Sinimborio. Look how the structure has been preserved until now. This is Pili's oldest monument-like structure made of ladrillos or bricks. Still standing today is the watchtower of a leprosarium in Zone 1, Yabu, Barangay, Palestina. The crumbling watchtower is all that remains of a state little hospital diocesan de Lazarinos de Palestina, a leprosarium founded in 1872 by the Archdiocese of Caceres and administered by Franciscan friars until the end of the Spanish rule. Even in its sorry state, however, the Watts Towers is an important signpost in understanding of the town's local history, form of government and dynamics of the time. Palestina, formerly under the jurisdiction of Milaor, was assimilated to Pili in 1874. Its original state is being preserved. So you have there Watchtower. which is an important sign post in the understanding of the town's local history, form of government, and dynamics of the time. What the learners should think and feel about it? That they will have a feel on the preservation of historical landmarks. They will have the understanding of the town's local history, form of government, and dynamics of time. They will appreciate the concern of the Franciscan friars on health. What will the children do or what will the learners do? They will conduct a research in a form of, on the form of government using the Spanish time. They can make a letter of appreciation, an essay, and other forms of composition. They can create things to do. It's a things to do list in preserving historical landmark. Now, why is it important? Before we have to teach about history, they should first love 
the town's local history, the town's form of government, and the dynamics of time. And perhaps in making letter of appreciation that could also be used as across subject areas or interdisciplinary activities in other subject area if this one is concerned with Araling Panlipunan, making of letter of appreciation and essay and other forms of composition can be a concern of English. But then the context is on the local and contextualized material which was documented and researched by the writers. You have also ensuring values of Bulaenos. They called it Sarangonan. So if you try to notice, they also have what the learner should think and feel about, what the learner should be able to do to transfer learning. These were also written by the Bula Local Heritage Matrix writers. This is just to give you samples on how you make use of the local heritage theme. The steps in the curriculum localization process, you need first to assess the local needs. Then you have to review the learning standards. You have to localize the content, if necessary. You have localizing pedagogical approaches and strategies identifying the use of local resource materials, localizing assessment strategies, integrating local curriculum elements in learning standards that can be done in collaboration with administrators, teachers, students, and community. This is the aim of our educators. Curriculum localization is the process of enhancing the national curriculum. Why do we have to enhance? Because we have to do that because we want to make it culturally responsive. And how can we do it? We can do it through the use of local learning systems with local content language resources and learning processes for which the goal is the learner's improved performance. Why improved performance? Because they will take part in their own local history, in their own culture. They will take pride in one's culture and they will have strong commitment to the community because they will better understand their community as they go along learning other communities. This one is an example also on embedding the Warai identity to K-12 curriculum, the Takloban City Division initiatives. They also have their division local heritage matrix forward the division contextualized material curriculum until it is for classroom utilization. But what they have done is they made use of cultural mapping, they had write-ups, validation process, review and evaluation. And they integrate or embedded the local icons into the K-12 curriculum. There was a review and evaluation and the finalization process. And in the utilization in the classroom, they prepared lesson plan guide matrix on localized lessons, prototype lesson plans, development of LRs, review and uh, evaluation, and validation process. This one is Pintados Festival. This one is taken from the Pintados of 
the festival festival in Tacloban City. So this one, they also have what the learner should feel and think about, what the learner should do to transfer learning. You can benchmark on how they do it. This one is in science. This is about force and motion for grade three in third quarter, third grading period. The lesson is about force and motion. Content standard was also written. The learners demonstrate understanding of motion and objects. Where did they get this? They have always the curriculum guide as an important material to refer to the content standards and also for performance standards and learning competency. You have here the performance standards. The learner should be able to observe, describe, investigate the position and movement of things around him. And the learning competency, the learner should be able to describe the position of the person or an object in relation to a reference point, such as chair, door, or another person. Identify things that can make objects move, such as people, water, wind, and magnets. But the theme that was used was about games in their local themes, cultural icons they prepared, yung sinasabi ko kanina, where they have there the competency that they would like to emphasize this one in the competency to be able to identify what can move an empty can by placing playing tumba lata to be able to value the sportsmanship in playing tumba lata and if you try to see you have there the code which is provided in the curriculum guide and the learning materials you have also there as written. You have there also describes and interprets the basic operations and in teachers using materials such as algebra titles, counters, chips and cards, performs the basic operations and integers, varies the code, and in the localized material, they place visualize and describe the different solid figures, cubes, prism, pyramid, cylinder, cone, and sphere in Santo Nino Shrine, People Center, and other local tourist and historical places in Tacloban City. Meaning, some other learning competencies were addressed locally. But this is for you to note. Important notes learned on the process of DCCM and DLHM preparation. Contextualization is possible in all subject areas, in all grade levels, but not all competencies can be contextualized. Contextualize if necessary. The content and performance standards should not be compromised in the contextualization of the curriculum. Contextualization can be done across the learning areas, but it would take a lot of planning and a good skill. Contextualizing a lesson should not be confined to the local culture icons, but beyond which is within the schema of the learners. The schema, the background of the learner. The lesson will always be easy if the schema is considered. There are books where samples given are never familiar with students.
and could be replaced with samples that could just be available in the locality. This explains within the schema of the learners. DLHM is grown and it can expand through the years of implementation as long as there will be persons like you who will be interested in writing and contextualizing. There are always challenges in anything that we do. We have validation of dates, stories, comprehensive documentation, limited participation, cultural authenticity, hazards during cultural mapping, because this also needs expertise, but much more this needs interest. Why do we have to validate the dates? we might be teaching a wrong fact. Why do we have to validate the stories? We will be telling this from generation to generation. Why do we have to make use of comprehensive documentation? Well, in order to support our material. We are always facing the challenges but this is very important because materials were never written, especially interesting local materials, because there were no writers who were interested in making documentation, writing about cultural materials, culture-based instructional materials where this one is very basic before we learn other cultural materials we first have a heart for what we have now way forward is to improve the participation of the community series of consultations review and validation developing learner resources reorientation recultural mapping community feedback contextualization like competencies, coordination with LTUs. Here is the contextualization framework. The K-12 curriculum, learning areas, learning domains, standards, and competencies. The contexts The local culture, belief systems, institutions, the language, oral and written. We also have the biogeographic location, history, social, sociocultural aspects, the interests, intelligences, the learning styles, diversities, learning processes. Our students have different interests, different level of intelligences, different learning styles. Really, they are diverse in a diverse community. They also have different learning processes. They have different values. They have different future careers. where the division local heritage matrix and the division contextualized curriculum material could make a contextualized teaching learning in the learning spaces and environment, in the instructional procedures with distinct assessments, learning resources, the policy, the educational planning, the capacity development, and the content appropriate supervision of the LD, LRMDSS in the contextualized school governance, the monitoring and evaluation of research, there must always be 
collaboration in order to have the person, the human being, to become a whole person. We would like our students to be developed holistically. So you are a researcher then if you try to write about a certain theme. You try to identify the, the cultural heritage theme. You need to write up through interviews, actual visit to the place, and other means of verification. You have to submit certification as to the veracity of the materials and the information. So the writers will write also about the historical significance of the theme, including its physical description, what the learners feel and think about the theme, what the learner should be able to do to sustain their learning, and submit the write-up to the editor, and finalize edited write-up from the editor. Your researchers, yeah, they have to identify the cultural heritage theme, conduct interviews, mapping documentation through pictures and narratives, and also submit research data to the writers. This is the suggested font, size, style in making the DLHM that you need to always think of the historical significance of the heritage theme in the description. In the DCCM, you use the prescribed template, the competency in the curriculum guide to be contextualized and should remain as is. Below it, encode the contextualized competency, highlight the competency which is contextualized in a red color, and do not change the format of the curriculum guide. As we have said, you will not change what the competency is. You are only going to contextualize, listen again, you, the competency in the CG to be contextualized should remain as is, meaning you copy. But below, you have to encode the contextualized competency, but write it in a red color. You just refer to the given sample. They always say, that the ultimate inspiration is the deadline. That is according to Nolan Boshin. So far, when we write, we have to aim that we will try to finish them. However, we need to have more server, more interviews, survey, validation. Because whatever we will write will always be in the mind of the learners, in the mind of the readers. Okay? Thank you very much.